Hi friends. I have been putting off this video for a few reasons. Um, one being that I didn't want to say anything that could potentially hurt the other person involved. I didn't want to speak from a place of anger or sadness or emotional, just any, you know, I didn't want to speak from emotion. I wanted to just speak from my heart without allowing my emotion to take over. I also wanted to have a lot of clarity on my thoughts and I wanted to go through a healing journey before speaking about my process because I mean I want you guys to know that there's light at the end of the tunnel. I don't want to be talking from a place of grief. Um, I want you guys to know that shit's gonna get better. Alright, so today <laughs> we're talking about my breakup. I've never really done this before, like I've talked about heartbreak, I've talked about my experience through heartbreak and all that, but I've never really talked about my breakup um i'm not gonna talk about like you know the the details of course i would if it were up to me i would but out of respect for the other person i think i'll avoid that we'll see <laughs> okay so if you didn't know my ex and i broke up in i would say late march early april i'm pretending like i don't know the date it was april 2nd <laughs> i know damn well what day it was it was april 2nd okay um, the relationship seemingly died before the breakup. I think the last two months or so of the relationship, I had already started my grieving process without knowing it. I think I was mentally detaching from that person and I knew it was the beginning of the end. I knew it in my heart, I knew it in my gut. I just was not aware of it at the time. Um, I would say the last two to three months. Things changed, things changed. Especially in that last month, things things really changed and I could feel the shift. And I think it was on both of our ends. Um, it was over, it was over. I mean, I, I felt it and I think I was lying to myself because I didn't know it was over at the time, but I did. It's so hard to explain. Anyways, so the breakup, um, shit went down, you know? It was one of those times when the smallest of arguments just fucking exploded, you know? When you're just play fighting about something and then it escalates and then it just kind of goes in a direction you didn't expect it to go. It was one of those. It was a lot of tension built up over the relationship that just let itself out on a silly argument, really. Because if you were to ask me what the argument started with, and I told you, you would you would laugh. <laughs> You'd be like, how did this get you here? It makes no sense, but it makes all the sense. So there was an argument that started over something, you know, silly, and it escalated, and it really, really escalated. And um, eventually that led to a fight, and that led to space, and that space uh, lasted about a week of just us reflecting and thinking and making our choices, and in that week, I already had mentally broken up with him like I I mentally I, I it's like I was grieving the breakup that hadn't even happened yet um, because we were still very much together but I just I just I don't know in my head I, I just I knew it was over and I was ready to make that choice but I gave myself the time to make that choice and then we came together and had a conversation and we were on the same page completely we both knew what needed to be done like I don't even remember anybody saying like I'm breaking up with you it was just kind of like we tried you know and it was sad it was really sad it was really sad I have not felt emotions um, around this breakup in a while because I healed I healed well I healed well I would say the month of April was whoo that was a sad time that was a sad time um, May, getting better. June, that was good. Um, I still had some, some stuff to deal with around the breakup. A lot of truths that I had realized after going through what I went through that kept surfacing. Um, and that was hard. And, yeah man, like, it, it was a weird time because, like, April I was just sad. I was so sad. And then May, I... I had taken my rose-colored glasses of love off, you know, like when they say love is blind, it is, it is really blind. Um, I took those glasses off and I saw the relationship and the person for what it 
was and who he was and I didn't like what I saw. I didn't like who I became through the relationship. I didn't like the fact that we brought out the worst in each other. I didn't like what I realized about myself and how little love I had for myself. When I get emotional over this breakup, it doesn't really have to do with the other person, if I'm being honest. Um, although that person meant a lot to me at a time in my life, at this point, my pain is, um, it comes from, God, I didn't want to cry. I did my makeup so I wouldn't cry. It comes from like the lack of self-love that I had. Um, the things I accepted, the treatment I accepted, the way that I so blindly believed myself to be all the things that someone told me I was just because I trusted them. Um, it hurts to know that I, I was starting to hate myself because I convinced myself that I was all the things that someone told me I was. And that really hurt. I thought I was a horrible person. I thought I was, I, I, I just like, oh my God, I thought the worst of myself. Like I was so, I was so far from myself. I completely lost who I was and that I can't even blame the other person because I, I allowed myself to get to that point. Um, I did not love myself at all. I didn't because if I did, I would have walked away a lot sooner. And we both have our own versions of the relationship, I'm sure. Like, I'm sure of it. Like, I'm sure that the other person has villainized me in their mind. And that's okay. Because that just means we weren't compatible. You know what I mean? After April, I was angry. I was angry. My friends heard me say the same thing every day. Um, just just going off because there was so much anger that I never allowed myself to release into the relationship out of fear for what would arise. It was one of those relationships that I couldn't really bring things up because somehow it always became my fault every single time without fail, always became my fault. And I always believed it to be my fault no matter what. It, I was always convinced it was my fault and looking back, it wasn't always me it wasn't um but eventually i silenced myself because i i didn't want it to escalate so i carried anger that i didn't know i had building inside of me and after the breakup a lot of the anger was so present in my day-to-day -day life it was it was horrible i literally wanted to go to a um one of those smash rooms they have one in scarborough and I wanted to just smash smash some shit. Like I, I just wanted to just break a glass or do something. Like I, I literally, I had so much, I, I'm not an angry person and to have that much anger building inside of me was not normal for me because I don't really get angry. I don't yell, I don't scream, I don't, I don't fight people. Like I don't, I'm not an angry person. I'm an irritable person. I'm an irritable person. I'm not angry. And I was angry and I got myself a therapist and I've been going to therapy since then, and that has helped tremendously. And my therapist has just really opened my eyes on the relationship. And I'm so grateful for that because there's so much that I didn't see. And it's insane, like how blinding love can be. Like, oh my goodness, man. Oh my God, it's so crazy. And I'm not sitting here to victimize myself and be like, oh, what was me? <laughs> Poor Ashley. Like, I'm sure that, like, he has his own version of the relationship. That I was the asshole. I'm sure of it. I mean, all the mutual friends we had have completely ghosted me. So I'm pretty sure they have some story that may or may not exist. And some version of me that may or may not exist. Um, that's been told to them. Because they've literally ghosted me. <laughs> None of them answer my messages. Uh, many have unfollowed me. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy. So, I mean, I'm sure there's a version out there. And that's okay. I know my truth. I know my truth. I learned through therapy that I tend to gravitate towards narcissistic personalities. It's a pattern for me. I don't know why. That is something I'm trying to figure out. Um, I'm not diagnosing someone as a narcissist. I'm also not singling anybody out. I've literally gone for like four narcissists or um four people with narcissistic personalities or narcissistic flavors as she says um 
friends as well. I gravitate towards friends that have narcissistic personalities. Um, mostly men, male friends, not the female ones. Um, I don't know why I've had a healthy family dynamic growing up. My parents are very, very happily married and uh, I, I have a great family. I had a great upbringing. I was very privileged. I don't know what it is. I don't get it. I don't get it, man. I gotta figure that out because it, it, it doesn't make any sense. So that's normal for me to like go towards personalities like that. So I don't really notice when I'm around one sometimes. Lately, I've been much more aware. I can spot them now. Before, mm -mm, I never knew. And for some reason, I guess that like normalized it to me. So when I was around these personalities, I just like didn't blink. I didn't think anything of it. And I just went with it. I learned a lot through my therapist. I learned a lot about love bombing and gaslighting and narcissists and sociopaths and psychopaths and how your childhood affects the people you gravitate towards. I learned many things. I learned about my ex um, through sharing his upbringing and our story. I learned a lot about his personality type, which helped me make a lot of sense of things and helped me forgive him. He probably wouldn't understand why I need to forgive him and that's why dealing with these personality types is difficult. Um, so it's not something I would ever, you know, go up to him and say, I forgive you because it's for me, it's not, it's not for him. <laughs> um, I mean, he might be watching this, I don't know. But it took me a while to forgive him. It took me a while. Um, if you're dealing with that, I'm so sorry. <laughs> because forgiving someone who isn't sorry or who doesn't know they need to be sorry um, is really fucking hard. It's really hard. Oh, my face is all red now. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, it was hard. It was really hard. And it was just every time I thought I forgave him, I would be like journaling about it. Like, yes, I forgive him. And then like a couple weeks later, I'd be so mad. I'd be like, I need to go to a rage room and smash some shit. <laughs> smash some shit. It's so hard to say that. Smash some shit. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd be like, I need to go to a rage room. And then like a week later, I'd be like, I forgive him. And then two weeks later, I'd be like, <laughs> it, was, it was a roller coaster. Like I always say, and many say, healing is not linear. You are not going to be on a healing journey that's like this. You're going to be on a healing journey up, down, up, down, up, down, loop, do, loop, 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 loop. Hi, I'm filming right now. Okay, my friend just FaceTimed me and I feel a little better. So let's try not to cry for the rest of the video, but no promises. Okay, I'm emotional. Anyways, so yeah, the forgiving process was really hard, forgiving someone that is not sorry. And again, that doesn't know they need to be sorry is almost impossible, but it is very much possible. So if you're going through that, you will get through it, I promise you, because as of right now, I have peace. I have no hate in my heart. I have no anger towards this person. Sorry, that's a lie. That's a lie. Um, every few months, I'll randomly remember something. Maybe it was something that was said, maybe a situation, maybe whatever. And I'll be like, wow, like I, I can't believe I let that happen. And I have anger. Um... You know what, not towards, not towards him. It's more towards myself. I'm like, are you stupid? Why did you allow that? <laughs> Why were you okay with that? that? That's where the anger comes in. It's towards myself. That's another part of the healing process. It's forgiving yourself. It's, that is harder than forgiving the other person because that's what I'm dealing with. That's why I cry sometimes. Like every few months I shed a tear because I'm like, wow, where was the self-love? Like, what were you doing? Like, are you dumb? I would literally, I literally look at myself like, yo, are you fucking dumb? Like, what is wrong with you? And I don't like to talk to myself like that, so I don't recommend that. Negative self-talk is never okay. But sometimes I would slip into that low vibrational place and I would be angry at myself. And I'd be like, what the hell, man? So yeah, like, it was hard. I would say going through this, in April, I didn't feel like myself until June. I felt better in May, but I felt like myself in June. June, I was thriving. July, I was on my hot girl shit. I was having fun. I feel like me again. I feel just so much better. There's no one telling me who I am anymore. There's no one 
that I have to check in with daily. There's no one that I have to give my time to. There's no one that I have to split half of my heart with. There's just me. And I feel so good. I can decide who I want to be every day. I can just, I just feel free. I, feel, I don't know. And I've, I've just never felt more like myself. And it's crazy. And like, now that I live downtown, it's so different because I'm in this whole new environment and I said goodbye to a place that holds so many memories with this person and I, and now this is just all new energy. And I just feel like I can like reinvent myself, you know? And there were so many life changes when I went through that breakup, um, which is something that I recommend doing. After the breakup, I, like I said, I went to therapy. I started medication. I changed my habits like completely changed my habits, my work ethic, my everything. I changed my diet a little bit. I was doing a lot of yoga, stretching. I started going on walks and realized I fucking love walking. I started reading again. I started sewing, not good at it. I started sewing um, and I stopped doing things that I realized like I didn't actually like. I just got used to certain routines, you know? It was hard for me to come back to certain hobbies that I shared with that person. For example, um, this is really specific, but like film photography. I fucking love film photography. And yes, my ex put me on, absolutely. And that's okay. I, I love it. I don't know if you can see these little photos right here in my reflection. Um, I have continued to take photos of people and things that I love. And that used to make me sad. Now I feel empowered, it's, it's mine. You know what I mean? It's not a hobby that I that I share with anybody anymore. It's mine. Um, just like a few things like that, little things that I brought back into my life that brought me joy. Certain artists um, that I avoided, I wholeheartedly enjoy now. You know, like, I feel good. I feel good. And I went through so many breakups with this person. I never imagined that I would be at the place that I am now because every time we broke up I just I just wanted him back <laughs> if I'm being honest I just wanted him back that's all I wanted every time we broke up I would convince myself that I was healing but I was really just working on myself so that I could be a better version of myself for him and don't do that you will lose yourself do not change yourself to be with someone because you will lose yourself when the right person comes along you will be ready for them and they will be ready for you you can grow together yes you can inspire change in each other you know but you shouldn't have to change yourself to be with someone i felt like i was constantly walking on eggshells to become this version of myself that probably didn't even exist and that was my fault that was my fault for accepting that and you know just thinking that was normal this was also my first relationship so there were a lot of things that i learned through this i don't regret a second of it i don't regret getting back together seventeen thousand times i don't regret any of it because I learned so much about myself um, and I'm grateful to that person for this because I, I learned a lot about myself and how I deal with um, things and I learned I just I grew this deep level of self-love for myself that um, I never had before and that happened after this final breakup and that wasn't because of him that was because of me I just want to clarify that I enabled that change within myself the person I was in that relationship is no longer the person that I am today. To be honest, he doesn't know me anymore. Which is scary to say. It's weird. It's weird to say because he knew me inside out for three years, you know? Um, but he doesn't know me anymore because I, I, that, that version of me doesn't exist. The version of me that was in that relationship does not exist. And I'm so happy to say that because I don't like who I was becoming at all. And um, I never want to go back to that place. Even if it means I have to be single for the next 19 years of my life, I, I don't want to go back to the place that I was in when I was in that relationship. And again, a lot of that had to do with me because I had the choice to walk away. And I didn't. So did he. But he didn't. Instead, he projected a lot of his bullshit onto me. But he probably doesn't know that. And he probably won't agree with that. And that's okay. That is okay. Because everybody has their own narrative. Everybody has their own truth. I'm sure there is truth to both of our sides. I don't know. I'm scared to post this video. I am. I don't know what's gonna come after this. 
I don't want to offend anyone. I don't want to hurt anyone. I don't want to expose anyone. Not that there's any exposing to do. This is probably the most you'll get out of me in terms of this relationship. Probably, I don't know. I don't know, but I think this is enough. I'm sharing enough of myself with you um, in hopes that it helps someone. I just have some quick advice. If he wanted to, he would, or she, or they. If they wanted to, they would. Doesn't matter what that might mean. If they wanted to ask you on a date, they would ask you on a date. If they wanted to ask you to be their significant other, they would ask you. If they wanted to ask you to get married, they would do that. If they wanted to treat you right, they would do that. If they wanted to, they would. It's my first piece of advice. My second piece is do not ignore the red flags in the beginning. No matter how small they seem, they will come up. And the red flags that you ignore in the beginning will likely be the reason that you break up. My third piece of advice is if you guys are not compatible, don't pretend that you are. You can't work on things in hopes that you will become compatible. If you have a certain personality type and they have a completely different personality type and they do not align, don't force it. Do not force it. My fourth piece of advice is if you don't share similar values, walk away. My fifth piece of advice is when someone shows you who they are, you need to believe them. You will save yourself a lot of heartache if you just do that one thing. Believe them. Well, I don't know the purpose of this video. What I do know is that it was pretty therapeutic to my ex, if you're watching this. I'm aware that you have your own version of our relationship. I'm very much aware. I wasn't perfect. I was selfish. I was inconsiderate. And I really thought that I could be the person that you wanted me to be, but apparently she doesn't exist. And I'm sorry if you felt like I led you on about who I had the potential of becoming. But I'm also aware that we all have a choice and you had the choice to walk away and I had the choice to walk away. But instead, we continue to bring out the worst in each other and I forgive you. That's not for you, that's for me. And I forgive myself. I mean, I'm working on that. I'm working on that, but yeah to people watching this if you are going through heartache it gets better i promise you i'm happy i know i was crying in this video but i'm happy i haven't cried over this person in a long time i feel good i'm having fun i'm rediscovering myself i'm getting to know myself again i'm dating myself i'm dating other people i'm having fun um you're gonna feel ready again you're gonna feel ready to be alone again you're gonna feel ready to be with others again you're gonna feel good about yourself again i promise you i've never loved myself as much as i do now i fucking i fuck with myself <laughs> i really do inside and out inside and out i just I, there's a lot i need to work on there there's a lot but i do the work and i show up for myself daily and that's what's important so yeah okay Whew, that was a heavy one that was a heavy video but it was honest it was it was my truth it was my my heart it was it was me so i hope you can appreciate that um i hope i i don't know helped you or something i don't know but i just thanks for watching thanks for watching leave a comment share your stories share your heartbreak experience what's your heart feeling right now let's talk i will be in the comments we shall chat I will see you there. Oh god. I have a meeting with someone big in half an hour. So I gotta go. Ooh, that was good timing. I have a really exciting meeting. And, um, God willing, I can share that with you very soon. Okay, I gotta go. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>